Notion recently released five major updates and announced two future features, offline mode and mail, during their Make With Notion event in San Francisco. The updates include forms, layouts, automations, marketplace, and Notion AI. With so many updates to cover, I'll focus on just automations in this video. Now, this feature received a significant upgrade. When you click on new automation, you will be greeted with a clean interface that clearly outlines its components, triggers, and actions. As you define your automation, you will notice new options under actions, including sending mail and defining variables. While Gmail is the only email integration that's currently available, many more options are likely to be added really soon. And there's also this hidden feature that's integrating formulas into automations. This allows for context-driven automations that weren't possible before. Let's dive into an impressive example to illustrate these new capabilities. So I've created a project tracker called SparkFlow. It consists of three core databases, Project Flow for managing projects, Week Flow for tracking weekly tasks, and Time Flow for time tracking. A project flow is linked to week flow, while week flow is linked to time flow. I love organizing my projects into weekly sprints. For me, a week acts like a mini goal, keeping me intensely focused and accountable while eliminating the distractions that come with longer timelines. Now, this approach works really well for everyone, no matter what you're using it for, whether it's work, for projects, for personal goals, or for creative pursuits. Now, everything inside of Spark Flow is integrated through automations, as you will see. A project flow manages my projects with a focus on YouTube content. Each YouTube project spans about seven days, with tasks being distributed throughout this period. Scheduling a project is as simple as just entering the name of the project. To initiate the project, I just click on this Activate button called Activate YouTube Project. As project flow and week flow are linked as projects and tasks, all the tasks and their corresponding dates are automatically populated. The activate button also updates the project status to in progress. And importantly, the from date and the to date aren't restricted to today's date, a flexibility that really wasn't available before. This automation completes the remaining details for both the project as well as for the associated tasks. Now there's this project dates property which merges the from and the to dates into a single field. And it utilizes this formula called the range formula. A week flow has similar properties, but it includes some additional ones, like a task number, a stage, and that's helpful for grouping some tasks, the project name, and that's carried forward from the project database, a due status formula that shows the relative due dates, both past due as well as the ones in the future, a time entry button linked to the time flow database for tracking when you start a task. A time flow is a time tracker that's activated from week flow and that records the start time. It features two additional formulae, the time worked, which calculates the total time spent on an activity, both in hours and in minutes, and the time in minutes, which converts everything into minutes. So in addition to the buttons within the databases, you'll find buttons at the top of each database. I will explain what each of these buttons do as we go along through the workflow. A project flow has two main configurations, the activate button and the automation. The activate button, when clicked, performs several actions. It stamps the project start date with the current date. That's the date triggered. Calculates the end date by adding six days to the start date using the date add formula. It sets the project type to YouTube. It changes the project status to in progress. Now, this button configuration is just the first part of the automation process. Inside automations, you will find two automations configured, YouTube tasks and completed. YouTube tasks Tasks is triggered for all pages in the project flow, where the project type is YouTube and the status is set to in progress. The actions create and name 20 tasks. Each task is assigned a name, a stage, and there are six stages, A to E and Z, a from date, either from the date triggered or a date add formula, indicating a certain number of days from the date triggered, a project flow, which links both the project flow and the week flow databases, and a to date, similar to the from date formula. And finally, of course, there's the task number. Now, the task number is entered as a formula to ensure it's recognized as a number. The completed automation triggers when the status in project flow is set to complete. Now, here we define a variable named 
tasks by clicking on the add variable. This variable is set to the trigger page dot week flow, pointing the database we want to update. Next, let's look at the actions. Under actions, we choose to edit a page. Now here, typically we would select a specific database, but here we're not going to be doing that. We're going to use the tasks variable, which appears at the top as from this automation. We then edit the status property, changing it to done. So this ensures that when a project is marked as done, all the associated tasks are automatically marked as done simultaneously. A weak flow contains two direct automations, the time entry button and the assignee automation. Let's look at the time entry button. When it's clicked, it triggers an automation. This adds a new page to time flow and it picks up the task name, matching the weak flow task name to the time flow name. It links back to the original weak flow task using a formula. It sets the from date as the trigger time for time calculation and it copies the task number from the weak flow page. It pulls the project name from week flow, which in turn gets it from the project flow database as a relation. The assignee automation simply sets the assignee to the page creator. Now time flow itself doesn't have any embedded database linked automations. Now let's look at some of the top buttons. We'll start with week flow. We often need to postpone tasks during the week when unexpected events arise. So to address this, I've added a select property inside of week flow. Now to postpone tasks, simply tick the ones that you want to reschedule and click any of the buttons from P1 to P7, which indicates the number of days that you want to delay the task by. Now here FR represents the from date and TO represents the to date. Now inside of buttons, you'll find a formula with a date add property based on the date triggered. The clear button removes the tick marks. The select all chooses all the database records. To change the status of the specific week flow tasks, tick those tasks and click not started, in progress or done. Now let's look at some of the buttons inside of time flow. Inside of time flow, the automations only stamp the from time. We still need to complete the project and that would be to stamp the to time, to tick the task and stop. So we need to click the stop time button. To clear the ticks, we simply hit the clear button. The week view features a weekly calendar that automatically populates with task dates. Specific views like today, future, past due and done display relevant tasks, while all view shows every task. Time flow also includes tasks and project information as well as a graph showing the time in minutes. So if you want to see how to configure that due status formula for relevant dates, you should watch this video. And to learn about Notion charts, you should watch this one.